Here we go. The start of a best of five. Our playoffs have been nothing short of exciting and very close matches, with the exception of X6 taking their 3-0. There's a couple words I can think of. Exciting, draining, hype, straining. This is about me. Stop complaining. This is, this is about me. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a, we had a nice rhyme run going on yeah. there. Good job. All right, well, look at this. We're going to go into Sanctum with Widow Junkrat on both sides. Completely somberless. A huge switch as to how this map has been played. It's been mostly played with McCree and Widow. Occasionally, the Reaper Reinhardt will come through, but Sombra has been a staple. This will be the first time we do not see Sombra heading into Sanctum. So useful at breaking Arisa barriers to open up the point for Widowmakers. They don't have that now. Well, it's going to be Climax finding the first hit there as Aim God goes down, which forces the res out from Shara. This may just be to get the first cap to use these junk rats to give the extra damage. Then we might see the losing team make that Sombra switch. Right back there. Ella getting rid of IV, but the res is going to be used on him. So everybody who's going down is going to be brought right back up. But Ardian are going to have that first initial cap so far. Boone goes forward in onto the point, but he's going to get shredded down. Humbaba taking out Rio as well. No tank line available for the side of Metabellum. As Night Street's one back there, taking down Ivy yet again. Well, this further explains Ivy starting here. We're going to be seeing the Junkrat attack on both sides with no Sombra. The Junkrat player is oh. Ivy. CCJ take it out. And this is a meta shift overnight, what we're seeing on the Paul Sanctum. This just is not normal. Uh, to see this without Sombra in Korea. Yeah. And now it's very difficult to break for Metabellum. Even that, like the, something like the McCree, much more standard that we see yeah. with the Orisa and the Junkrat comps coming through, but just moving away from that, just ascending completely with the meta that we had established. Both of these teams coming out with the Widowmaker Trap going to come through. And again, going to get locked up as Ivy just spams away in onto the point, trying to lock down that. that. Diva can't do so so far, but both Zenyatta's gonna fall, both Reds is gonna be burned, but Rain dies shortly thereafter. CCJ starts popping off here for the side of Metabellum. They try to get the flip, two kills over to him, Yakung and Baba, both going down. CCJ for another one. Precite comes in, grapple to the side. CCJ able to do all of this because of the break on the Arisa barrier and Yakung going down. So Yakung leads an old charge right now, he did a lot more damage. They built 60% nearly here. CCJ grabs the stagger kill onto Violet, but they are able to break it by breaking down that barrier. CCJ not even really needing to flank here, just getting that opening once Yakpung went down is how they open it. And Climax, we know, is the better Widow. So it's unfortunate for O2 already to hold this to 99. It's really good plays by Nice, who holds actually this rip tire now. It's going to look to flank with it very likely when the push comes through. Wants to hold it until then. O2 already wants to commit the Junkrat and the Diva to try to break forward. Just as Metabellum did to get their own flip. Climax looking for the shot. Barrier's gonna be down with the rip tire now coming out over on the side. Looking for the pick to try to shut that one down, but Ivy can't do it. He'll die. In the meantime, Nice also is gonna get taken out. Ult coming in, drags them up top, moves pops out of the back, transcendence in from the side of O2 already and trying to get this flip back through. Nearly have it, but Metabellum do not want to surrender it. They at least want to tie the percentage that already an established. Really cool. Getting closer and closer here, but they get the flip in the end. Really cool supercharger usage here. Yakpung has it 5% faster than Rio, drops it down, gives so much extra damage to Ivy so he can boost through and do that damage to break the barrier to get control here and to get the better trade. They can't match the damage, both of course. Uh, Versys are boosting the Junkrats, but the Supercharger is going to give that extra boost to break through. Metabellum is going to have theirs now. Well, let's see if they can execute the same type of attack here. This is such a close map, 59 to 58, when this flip came through. Oh, Junkrat's down. That's going to be Violet just finding the right clicks there on the nice. Retire now in the back, hunting down the healers. Not going to find it, but forces the transcendence out of Aim God as he puts forth, looking for the point. 92% coming in for O2 Ardian. Looking to close this one out here. Who's going to go down? Climax finding the shot. The res is not available to bring him back in. I mean, now breaking the superchargers. Rio falls slow, taken out. Nice answers for one, but they need so much more. Metabellum, if they want to get in onto the point right now, just sticking down no T. Finally get the tag in. Nice going to fall. Res out from rain, brings Ivy back in. Chara's going to go down at O2. Looks like they might. Just have Sanctum. Who Looks that way. In, but he's going to get popped out of that mech very swiftly. And that might just be it. O2, or OT starting to plummet faster and faster. And O2 already had managed to get it 158. 158. Very dominant performance. They get the faster supercharger. They got control of the point first. So always had ult advantage. And when you're Junkrat Arisa versus Junkrat Arisa with Widow, of course, struggling to find picks outside of the supports. 
the Junkrat that has more damage because the Supercharger is going to be the one that's more successful. He breaks through the follow-up attack where they had their Supercharger came in without Nice because he was picked early on by Climax, the stronger Widow in this Widow matchup. He kills Nice, they approach with the Supercharger without the Junkrat. Things just fell apart from there. So we're gonna see now the switch to Sombra here from Nice with the Sombra Reaper variation. Whereas we're gonna see the Junkrat with the McCree on the side of the already because they do not have a Sombra player in this lineup. Stellar is on the bench. Ivy, the Junkrat, Genji. So somewhat limiting in terms of compositions they can run. But it can break down a Reinhardt shield quite quickly with that Junkrat. Brute force your way down. Yeah, that's why he's hugging the side. Doesn't want to put that shield up unless he absolutely has to. CCJ in the meantime is going to be hitting the back, firing off with the shotgun, but he's not going to be getting that much ult percentage this way. Needs to do some real serious damage to build up for that Death Blossom, but so far hasn't been in a position to do so. This is something that Metabellum in a good position to go ahead and get that initial cap. CCJ going low, popped over to the side, now jumped on from above, and he's just going to get taken down. Yakuba finds that kill, they open up on Achara, and the foot comes through just 7% for Bellum as O2 spill it onto the point and shut down Meta. This is so great for O2 already in terms of ult built there too. Yakpung survived for so long there, building up a lot of position, or sorry, a lot of percentage on the transcends. You can see Violet leads 20% over Chara. It was a really executed top-down approach there where they came from the high ground, were able to force the Reinhardt shield to be moved there, so they got a better flank angle. They had more DPS with this Zenyatta, with the Discord orbs for Climax to do maximum damage at range. They Getting ripped apart there, Climax on the high ground, looking for the hits, can't finish him off though. Fire's gonna come through, bouncing around from the back, Bane comes in, gets it in behind the right heart, no, hook to the side, Rio manages to stay alive, now Aimgod gonna use that Coalescence to help keep him topped up, and Ivy's the first one to go down here in the fight, Dead Eye out from Climax, pushed to the side, gets rid of Nice, denying the EMP, which means O2 might just be able to hold on to this one. Self-destruct up from Hoon, didn't know where it was going, Climax gets picked, as does Yakpung, they go down, Metabellum looking for the flip, still don't have it yet, Ivy's in onto the back side, gets rid of Aimgod, keeps this delay going strong. Delaying and building up another rip tire here, he's at 65%, they will get the flip, but that was still really efficient, how much damage he was able to do. The big scary thing here though is Bellum now has positional advantage and that EFB. Yo going low, Climax able to pick him off, is already in look for another fast one. Now he's gonna use that EMP, but not, I don't think he really caught anybody. Not really. Said it's gonna be meta. Losing members, yeah. Rio coming back up now. CCJ getting taken out in the fight. Has that Death Blossom available. The flip's getting ready to happen at 60%, moving up. Meta Bellum, not even half of that. Ardian is just controlling this map via range right now. They have so much range DPS with the Junkrat and the McCree, forcing Rio to deal with both sides of damage because they're attacking from two different angles. Climax is building these Deadeyes insanely quickly. He's using them to protect against flankers. That's how he was able to get the kill onto Nice, who now switches to the Genji. And this is O2 Ardian having a massive ult advantage, range advantage as well. They have to switch away from that Reaper. It's breaking this with no ults is going to be such a tall order right now for Metabellum. Nice finds one there as he takes out Ivy, follows up in on the range, build it up for that Dragon Blade very rapidly, which he is going to need because it's 95% here for O2 Ardian. Still have a couple ultimates to utilize to try to close this out, but Climax will die. Flip coming through in OT. Metabellum, they need to hold this for longer, 7% up to about 30, it hasn't been long runs for them. They need to know which angle that Otuardian is going to take, because Otuardian has been splitting the McCree and the Junkrat to two different sides, so if Riptire comes out, they have to defend that side, put a bubble down on one side, then maybe a Deadeye comes in on the other. So that's what Nice is doing while looking for the position. He's also building Dragon Blade. Here comes the Riptire. They do know this angle. Right nice side. That's gonna be nice, getting shut down for the delay. In onto that blade. self destruct in, Climax. Crouch keeps himself safe, and Hoon gonna go down with the baby D.Va. So Two angles, but again, that point. And it was the Deadeye was printed with the D.Va, but Nice goes down. Dmac comes through. This is gonna be the flip. Oh, CCJ going down on the backside, and Chara also got picked. Climax finds another it. one, and that is just gonna be it. O2 close out the Paul cleanly with a 2-0. Fantastic play out of O2 already in here. Ivy seems to be the answer. He's the X Factor they were needing exclusively Genji Junkrat for so long. But coming in today, playing the Junkrat, using Junkrat with Climax as well, going into the Widow matchup on Sanctum. You could argue that maybe that was the reason why Metabellum felt they were so compelled to run Junkrat with their own Widow for extra appeal. They knew that 
the Widowmaker battle wasn't going to be an easy one against Climax. Ardient controls the first map, has the better Widow, has the better Orisa setup in the second map, just having more range damage, and Climax hits the mark with the McCree. I don't know if this kind of performance continues and they don't feel the need to run Sombra at all. We may never see Stellar subbed in. I know Tordian's been consistently a fairly weak team on control. Until they won that Lijong, they were really low win rate, about uh, one in three, I believe, on the map type. Yeah. And remember that now they've won this one. They're going into their strongest map type in hybrids. Both teams strongest, they're both great at dive. Hymax good at long range hit scan, but also they're solid at the Tracer Sombra defense if they want to sub Stellar in for that. But I'm guessing uh, if we're going to Hollywood, for example, they're going to keep uh, Ivy in so he can yeah. play the Junkrat defense there. It's it's really, I think, based on what map pick comes out here for Metabellum, what they're going to do with a sub. Uh, it, it's hard to say. I think we might have like a bit of a, a reverse Sassen situation going on so far here for Ivy finding yeah. himself starting in instead of being the one who comes in after the first map. Maybe he's just going to be in from the get-go, play all the way through the series. So far, so good. That's the most dominant O2 has ever looked on control, even counting Lee Zhang yesterday, because it went to three. CCJ. That was their first win as well on Nepal. <laughs> it says everything, it says everything according to plan, going to the finals according <laughs> to plan. I guess that's supposed to be like a light Yagami-esque drawing yeah, there. Yeah, was definitely, that's definitely some manga yeah. stuff going on there. Well, all according to plan, going to the finals. CCJ become a very famous player, very recognizable given his hair. We got a nice little Orisa. Yeah. Young cheering for fan. YBT. Yeah. <laughs> He's back today. He was had a day off yesterday. Poor YBT casting Overwatch League and oh, Contenders. Say, you say he had a day off. He had a day off of Contenders. Yeah. He was still casting Overwatch League yesterday, so. He's uh, he still keeping stop. busy. Nice. Nice fan Number here. one. And I'm guessing the rest of those sides behind him might be as well. <laughs> that stellar one on the left, I, I would love to get a, uh, a close up on that oh, shot. Yeah. Because I can see it from my perspective. And it's a great sign. It's unfortunate that maybe he just won't play today. But yeah, it's uh, a possibility um, given the success rate of Ivy today and yesterday yeah. on the Genji, on Li Zhang, now playing the Junkrat here, altering the composition, running Junkrat with the McCree. Perhaps not what they were expecting to deal with when they ran that Reaper there on Garden. And obviously when you run into that, you are you have to switch composition or just really hold firm. And with the positioning where Climax was on one side and Ivy was on the other with the Junkrat, Reinhardt can only do so much with that barrier. Um, whereas obviously Winston can be a little bit more protective, but they had to switch to him. He has less protection in terms of stabil stability and protection because he can't hold a barrier. His barrier is temporary, but at least it can protect damage from both sides. Yeah. Well, the Riptire killed nice in that fight, so there was nothing to threaten Climax. And then he pops off the Deadeye. The, de the, uh, the Self Destruct protects there the D.Va, but he does so much damage afterwards. Once there's no Genji to harass him, no burst there, it doesn't matter. And Climax blew up. We're going to have no subs, it seems. We are going straight to Nimbani. This map, I think, a smarter pick versus the Hollywood pick that we've seen come out for Metabellum because you're dealing with both the Junkrat of Ivy now and you're dealing with Climax's Widow. At least on Numbani, it's tougher to use the attack Widow. We're probably gonna see Climax on the Soldier. You can deal with that with Nice when he is running that Genji. You have the ability to run defensive Junkrat with your composition as well with Nice on this roster. So this is the more flexible map for Metabellum that plays around the strengths of Climax's Widow and you avoid dealing with Ivy's Junkrat on Hollywood and on other key, uh, maps that we never see, like King's Row, for example, on Hybrid. Which, rest in peace, I would love to <laughs> I would love to have some King's Row, but people don't pick it. We've even got Blizzard World. We have Blizzard World almost as many times as we've had King's Row in this season, I think. Yeah, it's, it's a large map pool. Teams are going to practice the maps they prefer. They're going to pick them when they lose, so the map pool ends up getting smaller. And as a result, it's a common trend in Create Esports from StarCraft 1, StarCraft 2, always going to pick the map you're more comfortable with. The map pool shrinks as a result, as yeah. you know what maps your opponents are comfortable with as well. Well, here we are, O2, leading the series 1-0. 25 seconds for these guys to get settled, work out their team compositions. We'll see what they're going to end up with here at the end of the day. Climax loves to run the Soldier on this map. 
It's a weaker map for Widow. So we see the soldier set up on the high ground here to the left side with Junkrat Peel. And it's very difficult to protect the soldier against Doomfist, which we have seen a lot of teams run to counter this uh, against O2 Aryan to break through Yakpung and Humbaba, then kill Climax, but it's just gonna be runaway dive, the Genji Tracer here. Coming out from Metabell with Moira. So they really wanna force the Genji into this position. They've correctly predicted it will be the soldier. They don't have burst without a pulse, but they can't just get on top, and here they go. Yeah, it's gonna be the dive there onto the high ground. Knight already left looking his way to a kill oh, on the violet. Oh, oh. And with the help of CCJ, they take down Climax, looking to shatter this point very quickly. Gets caught up in the trap, will get blown up in the end. The flexion was keeping alive for a little bit longer there, but Cap's already come through. That's about as fast as it gets. Metabellum take it with six minutes for the streets phase. Dash into full left click headshots onto Climax into the melee. Well, that's an insta kill. <laughs> and there they go. They rip through that defense. This has a great win rate if the dive is sloppy because you have your own supported healing coming from the Zenyatta, the Mercy, and your Biotic Field. It's tough to burst that without a Dragon Blade or a Pulse Bomb. But when you have that kind of accuracy, the dive is coordinated. Climax just can't stay up there on that high ground. Very well played by Metabellum. They've got a fantastic time bank now. It's already going to be a little bit frustrated with this one. Jay deep into the back side, looking to get somebody off guard with this Pulse Bomb, but everybody's up on the high ground. He'll try to wrap around behind them. It's gonna be the Coalescence coming through, pulses in on a Violet, doesn't have that Transcendence available still. So he'll go down, but Ivy answers for nice, taking him out with a Satchel. Now looks for a pick with a Rip Tire, and gets Aim God. Cart now gonna be halted as O2 can alleviate some pressure and push up. Yeah, so they just continue to hold control of this cart. They do have the Tac Visor almost ready. This Hoon is going to go ahead and reset here. Let's get off the side of the map, finally. They're sticking with this Junkrat pick, not because they think that Sombra is weak, but because this is the lineup they chose, because they wanted to have the ability to use the Junkrat Soldier to defend point A for a long time. And that's why it's so painful they lose on the first push, because they don't have a Sombra player in this lineup. We're going to be seeing a lot of Soldier here, and they need to make it efficient. They need to control this high ground. Dragon Blade being available means they have that burst to break through it, though. Speaking of which, it's gonna be nice coming in, gets that swipe in on to Ivy, but he cannot finish him off. He tries to make it over to that mini pack, cannot do so, and three members gonna be dead on the side of Metabellum as he tries to advance here with this push. But they haven't really been able to move up at all. Hoon's gonna get popped out of that mech, you would expect here. As they push over the side, that just jumps over the, jumps off the side of the map, so rather. The difference between Soldier and McCree is McCree is more of a glass cannon. He does a ton of damage, but dies easily. He needs to be really healed, doesn't have self-healing. The Soldier is almost like a, a DPS tank. Like, he will just take all the aggro, survive through it. Even though he dies in the end, while they're trying to focus him down, everyone else in O2 already wins the longer fight. So he does a ton of damage with his attack visor while being focused, while using that sustainability. Very nicely done here by O2 already to play around this. Sound barrier in, but don't really have any aggressive ults to go alongside of it. Like that Dragon Blade, they try to keep nice alive. Gonna pop that one out there from Chara as CCJ goes low, will get taken out of Baba finding the kill, but Hoon throws in the bomb, fights both supports Violet and Rain go down. A totally starting to grab back control of this map with that double kill. Humbaba, risky self-destruct there. Very unlikely to be able to re-mag. That's a pretty big waste here. They're not going to have it for contest now. The tire coming in. We'll get rid of Nice. Yakpung going to die. See O2 already trying to push back, but they can't stop that card from rolling in. So now it's four and a half minutes with a home stretch to make it into C. Metabellum still making excellent time. Yeah, Metabellum making excellent time at O2 already and having some really cool defenses there. Ivy with a rip tire into another kill before going down. Climax helping to finish that off. Building another attack visor here. The best thing possible would be for CCJ to either burst him or the support so they don't have that extra healing from that biotic field. Ideally the soldier, but any pick in the back will do. That's what they want to do to distract, force out maybe an early ultimate. Looking for the Percy, fails to get it. Yeah, tries to get the one clip, doesn't have it. Pulse Bomb goes out, Hail Mary from him, falls short, and Climax cuts him down from behind. Metabellum gonna wait and regroup, but Hoon gets popped out of the back. Tries to trade some back. Climax goes low, but he's got that old harmony on him to keep him alive. And Violet will go ahead and yeah. take down his. Violet has been one of the most 
aggressive Zenyatta oh, that we have has. in this entire tournament. Very Jonic esque. He's died. Performance. He's died a lot for it too. You know, in the matchup against Widows, especially because he pokes his head out quite a bit to try to greedily build transcendence. But when you're this far behind, you need to take risks like that. You need to be building that transcendence as soon as possible so you can protect Climax, get him the value out of that attack visor. Nice is looking for the Dragon Blade execution here. He's spotted. Violet, Violet hiding in the swamp. He doesn't have that transcendence oh, yet. The trap is there. Nice. Getting locked down. We'll go ahead and get the kill there on Ivy Top. Maybe the, the nades off the backside of the Junkrat. Death would take him down, but doesn't get caught by those. Now nice up onto the high ground. Looking to get rid of the tanks. Discord Orb in, and Yakun goes down. Mercy hovering nearby, but can't get in range to pick him up. But in the meantime, Hoon has been traded out. Okay, he's still holding this blade. They just couldn't find a way to use it. Pack Visor's out Great early. Great deflection coming through. Takes down Rain. Now it's going to be the blade, but Ivy finds the kill. Nice. Only going to be getting one with that one. Nice always trying to look for the perfect blades. Gets the single kill, but with the Tack Visor out, there was no way he was going to survive. His team wasn't there. That ended up being fairly wasteful. And you know, when we're looking at a four minute time make, moves like that don't matter so much. But when we're down to 230, it's going to start to feel real bad given the four minute time make they had before. They wanted to have a massive lead with that first insta cap on A. No longer going to be the case as Climax is going to make the switch now over to the McCree for extra peel since the target has been those backline supports. Another tire and just going to go for the pop there. On to Hoon, buy them some extra time off that bank. As Meta Element gets ready to fall below two minutes remaining. It started off so well. Honestly, hold was a bit extended in the street space that drained down the clock, but it was still so much from the first push that yeah. by the time they got to be, they still had four and a half minutes. I love this McCree switch though. It's going to be so much more difficult for the dive to get back onto the Zenyatta, back onto the Mercy because the McCree has that stuff, the flashbang. Hoon's going to look to remake here very aggressively. Does, he's going to be rewarded for the risk he took here. We'll grab this remake without having to go back to spawns. He's still looking for the supports, but again, spotted by Climax. This is what I'm talking about. You can't die to the supports when the McCree's back there. It's so much more difficult to do. You were hard-pressed to kill the McCree either, so this is just such an intelligent switch here for Climax, who's accurate enough to make this work. Very impressive, intelligent decision-making here. Now they're going to have both support ultimates. Meta Elm is hard-pressed to break through. Even with this Dragon Blade they're about to have, they might want to be patient and wait for the support ultimates to force that in, because they might otherwise just be killed again by Climax's insane accuracy. Well, they're going to be charging in, go straight past the tank, diving into the backside, trying to get rid of the supports. They've managed to find Chara. He'll go down, already in fire, and back as Yakun gets the other one. Aim God gonna fall. Already in holding strong. Everybody staying safe because of Violet's transcendence there. Keeps them in the fight. Double struck out from Mbaba, buying more space. Now we're down below a minute. They dove too far into the transcendence. Yakpun finds the supports. There's nobody to peel for him. With Climax surviving, Yakpun knows no one's there. No one's protecting the supports. He dives and commits Primal because he wants to get the double. Metabellum has nearly the big six, minus the Pulse Bomb here. If they can't make this push work, this is going to be a prevention of capture of point C here. Riptire to start off the defense here is what Ardy wants to do. They can also use it as a tactic to open up this dead eye. And already so much damage under Winston. Climax gonna go low. Dragon Blade ready to go. The back side of the sound barrier. Chara invests that one. Transcendence. Riptire in. DCJ gets rid of the Riptire. Not allowing that to upset the push. Nice goes low. Orb of Harmony in. Looking to take down the baby demon. Will be able to do so. Baba out of the fight. Climax still gonna be looking for an opportunity to use that dead eye. He got rid of CCJ, still holding the ultimate, but Ardian, they lose the tank line. Mbaba gets ready to come back in, but it's an OT push being pushed forward here by Metabellum. They still have three ults ready to go. Aim God, using that trap. Oh, he's trapped! Blade is out! He's gonna get trapped down! Deflection comes in! He gets the bounce back on the Violet, takes him out! Follows up onto Ivy with the swipe. Now Mbaba knocked out of the mech yet again. Self-destruct, fight to Hoon, trying to bring it home for Metabellum, and I think he just did. They finally get the push, but this was still catastrophic for Metabellum. They started off with six minutes on the clock. They had six minutes and they had four, and they were not able to push this through. And this comes off the back of the aggressive play you highlighted earlier from Violet, building Transcendence quickly, having it there to peel and defend for Climax. Climax survives the Mega Dive coming through. That allows Yakpoon to get into the back line, kill those supports, 
They were so efficient with what they did, the soldier play they held on for so long, using the soldier there, defensively absorbing damage. That's how they used Climax on both the soldier and the McCree. With the soldier, he has the biotic field for self-healing. He can survive through a lot of damage when the counter dive comes through. Metabell loses the fight. On the McCree, he has the flashbang and the accuracy to kill single target divers, like the Tracer and the Genji. So it's impossible to get into the supports. When they heavily commit, that's when Violet has the transcendence. And then Yakpung is able to sneak in the back line counter-wise to kill the supports. And O2 Ardent really understands how to play around Climax on this long range hit scan. Not just the Widow. You know, he started off the season with some lackluster performances on the Soldier, on the McCree, but that's no longer true tonight. It was not at the end of regular season either. Metabellum is going to be super frustrated that despite that time make, they get an overtime push. But now on the attack, this is going to be where Ivy has to show up on the Genji. They don't have the opportunity to switch to Sombra. They don't have that attack potential. And Climax, sure, he could try to attack Soldier, and we have seen that before, to middling success. But if they can get the time bank to be anything but zero, anything but overtime, and, and we just don't see Metabellum on that follow-up extra round get the insta-kill, then their defensive steps on this map have been good. So Metabellum now starting to feel a lot of pressure on this defense. And with Ivy's breakout performance on the Genji yesterday, that is their fear here. They are going to take the Tracer Sombra defense, not with Zenyatta. So nice to not build his EMPs as quickly, but they're having a lot of survivability against the Genji with the Moira. Two, looking for just as swift of an attack as we just saw from Metabellum. Nice into the backside. Got the spray down there on the rain. Not going to be able to get too much damage. No two just going to be poking their heads around the corner here onto the high ground. Ivy goes low, drops back down, keeps himself alive here for the moment. DPS on the opposite side of the high ground. Two drops in, rockets come out. Ivy's going to fall. O2. Maybe gonna get held back here on this first attempt. Lava tries to get himself out of there. He goes hunting back over onto the point. Rockets come through. Maybe even not really gonna stand a chance. Should be getting taken out. In the meantime, CCJ finds the victor on the climax. The Baba falls, and that's gotta be a shutdown on this first one. Yeah, very well played by Metabell, playing around the dive, spreading well, allowing the mobility advantage they had with their defense with the Tracer Sombra versus the very much entrenched defense of the Climax Soldier 76 there. You can see the difference, just so much more mobility, you can avoid the, the train that's crashing through looking for kills, and just recollapse back in with your tanks, as we saw Hoon just totally controlling that fight, killing the Genji early. Right, so we're on the side, gets the hack in. On to Rain, trying to finish him off. Up on his way out of there. Yakpung gonna go down. O2, a bit disjointed here on this approach. Yeah, but they have the blade now. This is their biggest tool that they've been working to build. And there's not a really solid defense. There's no EMP yet. No support ultimates to counter it. This is oh. going to really uh, open up the opportunity here with Charter. He's not gonna have that barrier. This should be their moment to pull the blade. He's hacked, but he will have that in just a second. Baba getting chunked out, so we start ready to go, so can make it back into that mech if he needs to. First six gonna be handed over to O2 as Metabell wait. Got EMP now. Hard to rejoin, nice pushing forward. Look at the Zenyatta, oh, this perfect is it. time, Violet! He's ready to go! Pushes that ult out and denies everything away from Nice. Not gonna get the execution now. Ivy coming back in, Dragon Blade, not gonna find anything. And even though Violet comes up with a huge counterplay off the Sombra, his team is still gonna be suffering. O2, they get two ticks, but they haven't gotten more than that, CCJ pulls Bob in, knocks him Baba out of that mech in O2. They're panicking now. Climax swapping over to the Soldier 76 for the attack. Oh man, this is rough to switch to the Soldier here with such a small amount of time bank. They're gonna actually just try to force a longer fight with this, get onto the high ground, and then defeat the dive when it comes through using Soldier's tankiness. I say tanky, meaning his biotic field. He's not actually, he only has 200 hit points. He's not actually a tank. He doesn't have armor, but he has survivability. He has sustainability, and he can survive through a lot of the dive coming from the side of Bellum. Pushing up here so he can get on the high ground. As you can see, he's on the right side. Coalescence coming through. Aim God trying to keep them topped up. Climax gonna die. Straight back onto Rio as Ivy finds the kill. Looking for another, another Dragon Blade, but there's just a minute left. 
Well, Soldier in the back room, trying to build up for another coalescence. Soldier attacks are so telegraphed, they're so one-dimensional. So Metabellum predicts this is the exact plan. They back off, they they give up control of the high ground of the dive, and then send their tanks using their mobility options across the platform, collapse on top of Climax, and they and already can't peel, because they already used their boost, they already used their leap, they can't save Climax, he dies. 55% only of the attack visor. He needs a great one here. If he can get on this high ground, he might just have it. He's got that protection this time, not alone. Got CCJ. Of course, no res gonna be available. Dive over onto the high ground from Rio. He gets shredded down. This Kodor doing so much work. Now Hoon's gonna be out of the back. Okay, hey, opportunity here. Baby Diva not gonna be able to make it back in. He had that self destruct. That's gonna be the cap. In the end for O2. Able to grind that one out as the clock drops low. But it's just two minutes, 40 seconds for the streets phase. They need this to be rapid. I do really appreciate Metabellum just letting this go. As soon as the high ground was taken, they knew fighting this was gonna be a losing battle. And they were, they were going to waste ultimates trying to do so. Nice holding on to this EMP is such a great tool now to prevent completion of point B. Climax has high ground still, and there's not much they could do about it right now. They're only going to have to be, be able to control the tank battle with this EMP if they want to use it here, this far away from the point. Pack comes Play down coming there on the rain. They are going to go ahead and melt him down. Sound barrier cannot be used. Ivy has the blade out, but Chara was ready to go to counter it. He'll still fall, but again, Mitigating that damage coming through from the Genji. Can't get anything. Nice, able to just hold on to this EMP for now. To keep that. To maintain control over the cards. Spray coming through. Look at the thing up. Yacht can't just get it. Push this. Violet Climax comes did up so much Joe. damage. Yeah, as you say, Violet gets those kills there. And the cool thing about Climax's attack visor is he dealt with the Tracer, who was holding a pulse bomb. He dealt with the Sombra there in the end with Violet's help right after his death. So, so many ultimates help from Metabellum for preventing capture of B. But Otority just continues to be efficient with their ultimates. Violet's got another transcend, so with all the damage he's been doing, he's been so aggressive, as you say. Okay, it's gonna be a huge dive. They wanna commit hard on top of the card. Tanks blocking them from getting in. They're gonna use it on them instead. EMP thrown down, Pulse Bob in, onto Yakuk, takes him out. Hababa knocked out of the mech as well with the same blast. Hunting around finds the baby Tifa. Looking for a little bit more. They see the Lucio. They're chasing in, trying to get rain. Takes it down around the corner. Metabellum going to stop the push yet again. Hearts dangerously close, but O2. They need to make something work with this sound barrier. They're just unable to win the tank war when Metabellum has their movements tracked. They've already downloaded the play style of O2 already. It's this soldier play. To protect the soldier, get the soldier on the high ground, let him build attack visor. There's no extra dimension to it like a Sombra or a Genji D uh, Tracer dive. It's very one-dimensional, very easy to respond to, and they're doing a great job of just pushing this back, preventing the soldier from getting ultimate charge as well. And it's gonna be another halted push. Yeah, they're just gonna get ripped to shreds, go up supports fall as the Climax are chasing in, trying to get as many staggers as they can, because there's just 20 seconds left on the clock. Ivy needs that pulse bomb to open up something big. Remember, Ivy's also flexing onto this Tracer. It's not his main pick. He has played it before. He did flex to it a little bit on that Li Zhang map yesterday. He's mostly just Genji, so this is not a comp he's very comfortable with, with Climax. It's more Stellar's thing. Dive comes in, rain goes low. Use a sound barrier, but it doesn't even matter. He just gets shredded down, and Metabellum looked to end this right here. 1.71 left on that card. All that they need, almost get it in the end, but the rest of the members return. Pulse Bomb out from CCJ. Gets the knockout on the mech, Kambaba. Gonna be isolated, gonna be vulnerable, gonna go down. In just a bit here, hack in on Rain as well. They'll spray him through. Not gonna be able to get this cap, it would seem. O2 gonna be held right in front of the Meta Bellum tie the series 1-1. And it's a great map pick for Bellum. They played around Climax's soldier. We've seen on this map on attack so well. Uh, so many times so well, I should say. They've studied it, they've prepared, they researched properly the playstyle of Otoardi on this map. They were able to have a perfectly executed point A capture with Neist just cutting Climax's head off with that point A attack. And when you lose point A so drastically, despite the fact they had a great hold, they had to switch to the McCree at the end on point C, and nearly actually prevented that point C completion. When you lose off your point A that quickly and struggle on attack, you're going to have a bad time. And the execution of attack was simply just much crisper for Bellum. They had a much larger array of heroes they could rely on. And this is why the Stellar sub in being missed here is a big deal, and it makes a huge impact on what heroes you can play. If you can't play the Sombra, you kind of are forced to continue to run this Soldier because it's all that Climax can do. He can't attack McCree. It's going to be even worse. McCree has no sustainability. 
EMPs are coming down, they're losing the tank war, unless Climax is on top of the high ground, or obviously defending, where you have the defender's advantage, you, your opponent has to use cooldowns to attack you, so you're, you, ha you have the tank advantage there. But if you're attacking, then your tanks either have to stay on top of you, which gives you no range of vision or movement against somber EMPs, mm -hmm. or they go in and then you get dove upon and they don't have their movement abilities to come back and protect you. Well, 1-1 one, one. gonna be the series right here. Good to see no three zeros coming through so far in the semifinals, at least not in the first matchup. But Assault gonna be the next one. One of these teams is gonna be moving up to match point. Two more map wins, all they're gonna need. We'll see what happens when we come back for Assault in just a few minutes.